Welcome to Voice Rising with Cara Johnstad. Enjoy weekly conversations with leading luminaries, pioneering visionaries, singers, poets, musicians, and sound healers as we explore the profound Thank role you. our voice plays on the path to self-realization and global enlightenment. The internationally acclaimed singer, composer, author, healer, recording artist, voice expert, creator of Voice Your Essence, and founder of the School of Voice, Kara Johnstad uses her extraordinary spiritual gifts to empower others. Everything in this world vibrates. Everything has a frequency. A pioneer in the field of voice work and transformational songwriting. Her breakthrough methods are helping thousands of people worldwide fine-tune their body-mind-spirit system and unlock the energetic frequencies of limitless creativity, health, and abundance. Share your voice, ask your questions, join in the conversation. Receive life-changing, positive transformation and rise together to create a sound world. And here's your host, Kara Johnstad. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Voice Rising. Today we are exploring how we as a humanity can fine-tune our body-mind-spirit system and heal through sound consciousness. So what role does music play in shifting old paradigms and awakening to a vibrant life of pure presence? And to dig a bit deeper, I've invited into studio today the Grammy award-winning musician, composer, and producer, Paul Avgerinos. So Paul, he's a graduate of the Peabody Conservatory of Music. He's performed with some of the greatest, Isaac Stern, Pierre Rampal, Charles Aznavour, Liza Minnelli, jazz legend Buddy Rich, these are only a very few names. He's been principal bassist of several major symphonic orchestras around the world. He's toured everywhere. And at some point, Paul decided to slow it all down, to slow down that touring and to follow his passion for electronic music. At that point, he built a wonderful studio, and I love the name. It's called Studio Unicorn. And what followed has been this amazing career as a composer, as a multi-instrumentalist, as a producer, 24 solo CDs in the New Age genre, including Grace, which won the Grammy for Best New Age Album, and Bhakti, which earned a Grammy nomination. And it seems like he's created Heaven on earth and in the moment we're waiting for paul to fly in from um a very important meeting we're we're kind of catching up with him in between all his many many uh, projects so before we even start this interview and to give paul some time to come into the studio we're going to play a track off of his grace album start off the show with a wonderful uh track and this is, again, the Grammy nominated, not even nominated, it was nominated, and then it won the award for Best Thanks. New Age Album, and the track is called Angelic. Oh, he's there. Well, then we're, we're going to hold off on that. We're going to give Paul a, one, one second to breathe, a little breather. Paul, I just introduced you, and uh, I want to warmly welcome you. I know it's very chilly where you are in the moment in the world. Warmly welcome you to Voice Rising. Oh, thank you very much. I could use it. Yeah, there's a lot of ice here all over the place. <laughs> yeah. I was just um, sharing with our audience um, your whole path as a musician and, of course, and all your touring, but at some point you did settle down and and you built this studio, which I love, of course. I think everybody loves Unicorn. So Studio Unicorn, 24 solo CDs, um, Grammy Award-winning producer and composer. And I was just about to say, even though there's a lot of ice on those roads, you seem to have created heaven on earth for a musician. You're, you seem to be living the dream. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I think it's a testament to the law of attraction, you know, when you really mm. put those principles to work and you make your affirmations every day and mm. always give gratitude morning, noon, night, in the middle of the night, mm. just all the time, thank thank the powers 
that be, thank the Lord, the universe, however you want to phrase it yeah. for your yeah. own comfort level. Um, I think it makes a huge difference. I am a living, living example of that. <clears throat> right. right. So let's start with your roots. So what's one of the strongest memories of music that you have from your childhood that touched you and inspired you to live this path and to follow your dreams? Yes. Well, uh, when I was about 15, 16, I was really getting into yoga and spirituality mm. and reading all the great books and all. And then I discovered John McLaughlin and the Mahavishnu Orchestra. Mm. I was uh, I was in a, a rock band rehearsal, and one of my buddies, uh, a guitar player in the band, brought over the Inner Mounting Flame by Mahavishnu Orchestra, and he said, Paul, you uh -huh. got to listen to this. And so he puts it on the <laughs> turntable, <laughs> the vinyl turntable, and the first song comes on, and I'm like, what? What, what is that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and he says, wait a minute, just listen. Listen to this guy play the guitar. It's, it's ridiculous. It's unbelievable. And within, you know, 10 minutes, I was completely mesmerized and hooked, and it t it's changed my life. It just completely changed my life. I said, okay, I've got to be in music. There's no doubt about it. If I could do something anywhere near as cool as what this guy is doing, I'm in. <laughs> wow. That is a fabulous story. And so then yeah. I became I became also uh, his guru, Sri Chinmoy, as you know, the law of the universe makes mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. fall into place, right? So his his guru, Sri Chinmoy, was living in Queens, New York, and was coming no to Norwalk, Norwalk, Connecticut, once a week, <laughs> which was five miles from where I was growing up. So I went down there every week, and I meditated with Sri Chinmoy. And one day, Carlos Santana came to meditation. You know, and it was just like, and I'm like 16 years old, so it was very, very inspiring. So I thought, wow. that's what I want to do. I want to combine spirituality and music. That's my path. That's my calling. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it was clear as a bell. But then I thought, well, you know, I've got to get some training because I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a very good musician, so I better go to music school. So I, I managed to get a scholarship to Peabody Conservatory and studied the bass violin and, um, you know, developed some fundamental skills and mm -hmm. knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, theory and harmony and history and all the basics and piano proficiency and all the things you need to be a well-rounded musician. And uh, it worked for a while in uh, orchestras and in uh, jazz and all. I played with Charles Aznavour and Buddy Rich and stuff like that. But the uh, the real heart heart path was to eventually open my own studio so I could do this this budding new age genre, which right. you know was just starting to become a uh, a thing. You know, it was becoming a, right. a known genre. So in the middle of the '80s, those opportunities started started blossoming. But it's uh, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of grace along the way, a lot of uh, serendipity and almost miraculous. Uh, coincidences shall we call them <laughs> of course yeah. they're not it's just the universe uh, answering your uh, dreams you know answering and, uh, what you put out right what you put yeah. out exactly yeah exactly so i mean one of your gifts i would say is to tap into the frequency of beauty and serenity right you seem to have fine tuned that and on your web page you state that your life's work is to spread peace love joy healing tolerance, contentment, and bliss through gentle and kind music. So this is a very crazy question for you because I know you're not only a composer and a musician, but you're also a sound engineer, right? So you're, you're creating in your studio. And what I've always found fascinating as a sound healer myself is this role that you are in this continuous cycle of absorbing what you create. Right, So you have those headphones on, and other painters will be painting on the canvas and leaving the canvas on the wall, and the sculptors might be in their atelier and, and leaving the sculpture there. But you're basically fine-tuning, tweaking all those colors, all those nuances, and what you put out through your fingers, you're basically getting back, poured into your... I don't know if this makes sense to you. This is the way I think and feel. You're basically pouring it back into your body as if you're pouring the, the beauty and the paint back into you and you're the very first person who gets to see what effect your music has before it goes out into the listening audience. So is this one of the reasons that you're so conscious of creating from that space of divine 
presence or oneness or meditation? Yes, yes, that's very well said. It's very eloquent what you said and so true. You know, many of us, I would say most of us, um, enter into this work first to heal ourselves, first to right. develop our own awakening. You know, it always starts out as a, a very uh, innocent searching and there are many missteps, you know, you try some music and you say, well, that, that's not really working, you know, that doesn't make me feel better. And mm-hmm. so you try again. And, um, and, and so it's also a very beautiful harmonization of the left and right brain because, you know, when you're working in the studio as an engineer, you have to be very mindful of uh, technical practicalities. Well, where do I plug this in and how do I set that and what does this do and how does this affect that and frequencies and compressors and you know delays and all these technical right. things but at the same time you're feeling it does what well, does this feel is, are mm. we going in the right direction in terms of feeling mm. and the visceral is my body relaxing and my spirit centering and opening up and there's a beautiful moment in productions where Usually, I come to around hour two or three when you start a new production, where there's a synergy where the disparate parts merge together, and it starts to become music. It starts to become something beautiful and something uplifting, mm. and you feel it. It's this moment, you know, your your hair, the skin may stand up. It's kind of goosebumps, and you might get a mm-hmm. a little. It's a, it's a, there's always a message that, oh, yes, you're on the right track. You're going in the right direction. And uh, that's always always a magical feeling, no matter how many thousands of times I've experienced that. You know, because I do a lot of music, not just for New Age, but I do music for TV. And uh, right. I've, I've probably created about 7,000 tracks at this point. So mm. um, it's really a beautiful process because you feel so complete because you're using all of your capacity not just the creative but also your rational side Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean we know we know that that music can tune right so it can tune our brain that's what you're talking about the whole the rational the emotional the spiritual can tune our biology orchestrate our immunity and allow healing to begin and we can use music to boost that immune system and create um, and maintain our physical mental health so you know you are you know you're you're lucky in a way because you're surrounded by great music and you're able to produce great music but with the cancer rates higher than ever and a large percentage of our population suffering from chronic pain and disease do you sense that music is the key to keeping people healthy, uh, happy, happy, healthy and happy is now healthy. <laughs> yeah, healthy yeah. and happy and Very more connected true. to their essence. Very true. Because a lot of I, your music is going in this direction of sound yeah, healing, of it's, sonic it's, sound it's, healing. Yeah, it's a huge part of our calling. And the basic issue is mankind's turn away from spirit towards the physical. So as, as humans focus too much on the physical aspect, careers, relationships, money, success, competition, all these worldly uh, foci, all these worldly issues, they uh, lose that spiritual healthy vitality. And so, of course, their bodies are going to suffer because the body is only a reflection of the state of spiritual manifestation. So... The, it's a big part of our calling is to remind people, no, don't go outward so much. Turn inward, relax, mm. meditate, do yoga, pray, do mantra japa, do whatever your spirit mm. likes to do to, to really connect with the universal oneness and the universal uh, state of perfect health and perfect pure consciousness. So I think it's uh, it's a, it's a important work that we're doing. It really is because, uh, and I'm always trying to think of uh, ways to reach more people. For instance, right now I'm working on an album for this fall, which is going to be with Krishna Das and uh, Wah and uh, Jayutal nice. and uh, Donna Delory. 
And it's all the beautiful mantras that we know and love, but it's up and fun and danceable and exciting, and it's hopefully going to draw in some younger people or some people who would never consider chanting a mantra but when they hear this it's like oh my god this is fun <laughs> this is sexy it's cool it's like uh, <laughs> you know it, it's hip it's it's whatever the current word is you know and uh so th this is a conscious conscious creation i'm deliberately making this album and trust me, I've had some pushback from some of the artists, like uh, Diva Primal was like, uh, that's too much for me, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. But, but I, and I respect that, I, you, know, I, you know, that's fine. But um, the, it's very consciously created that I, I need to keep reaching more and more people, just like uh, my guru Amma does. She constantly reaching out to everyone, people that are completely atheistic or angry or mean or you know completely materialistic she reaches out and embraces everyone and so i'm following her example as best i can and i'm thinking well how can i how can i package this beautiful message of spiritual bliss and liberation and health and and happiness how can i package this in a new way to reach more people or a different audience instead of preaching to the choir as it were so well and i think but, i think you're but, right yeah. on target right because we do have bliss and ecstasy and fun and dance in our bones i mean even the people yeah. that are sitting in meditation and and uh, yeah. for hours we can also be exactly dancing and dance, moving and yeah mumble dance and can be just as dance can be just as sacred and just as exactly. contemplative as meditation it's just all how you do it and uh, so, exactly. And, you know, we have bodies. We need to move them. We need to stay healthy. And that was one of the other big inspirations my wife was saying. You know, when I work out, when I exercise, it's hard to find uplifting, fun, danceable music that's also devotional. And she showed me right. a few tracks. There were only three tracks she could find. And I said, you're right, honey. i got to make a whole album of this right. so that when I work out, I can hear up exciting music but with a devotional heart and so right. yeah and I think it will uh, it will serve a lot of people help a lot of people because you know there's another uh, there's another uh, dissonance in our our collective consciousness that says if you're spiritual you're not physical you can't be spiritual <laughs> and sexual at the same time. You know, you, if you're spiritual, you have to sit in a cave, freezing, you know, meditating day and night, doing austerities. And then if you're worldly, you can have fun and you can dance. It's like, well, no, that's ridiculous. You know, what, what, why are you? <laughs> why are you so the next you album will be integrating a lot of uh, a lot of different facets and yeah. aspects of who we truly are. Let's be, Paul, hold your thought because we need to go into a station break. Hold that thought. I'm so happy you're with me today here at Voice Rising. We're going to be back in a couple of minutes. Great. Thank you. Edge of Conscious Radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living, a chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for that new understanding that will enhance your life and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. With happy clients all over the world. 
Kara Johnstad knows that your voice is the missing link to more authenticity, abundance, creativity, and health. An internationally acclaimed voice expert, Kara's breakthrough methods have helped thousands of people successfully heal their voice wounds and extinguish the story of self-doubt and shyness forever. Join in group trainings, attend online sessions, schedule one-on-one -on -one time, and invite Kara to work with your organization and community. Get started today. Go to www.karajohnstad.com and receive a special guided meditation designed to fine-tune your inner voice and welcome you on the voice journey. Hi, this is recording artist and composer Yuval Ron inviting you to a voyage through the chakras, a new double album of guided meditations to transform your life, a sublime musical medicine for nourishing inner peace and reaching to your higher virtues. Get it now at metamindfulnessmusic.com, M-E-T-T-A, mindfulnessmusic.com. Why was the basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling on it. The dad joke. <laughs> Corny, grown worthy, but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh, because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. So welcome back. This is Cara Johnson. I'm here in studio today with the Grammy Award winning producer and fabulous musician Paul Avgerino is talking about sound consciousness, sound healing, and I want to dive deeper into this topic. So Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you were brought up in the Greek Orthodox Church and then you already mentioned it in the beginning. You you became a student in bhakti yoga with uh, Guru Shi Chim, uh, Chimroy and uh, when you were 16, right? And so you've been practicing yoga, meditation, chanting, devotional singing, studying, and are also part of a small uh, Christian church near your home. These are little pieces of information that I, I received when, when following your path on the World Wide Web. And so how do you see your life as a path of devotion that's inspired by many different spiritual traditions? Or is I, what I sensed is just a lot of beauty of just weaving together you know, in a way that the, the best of the best, right? Just, just really sensing what is connecting you to source. Right, Kara. Yes, it's uh, very much a path towards the uh, universal understanding, the realization mm. that all paths lead to oneness and to pure love and mm. pure bliss. And um, it's, it's kind of funny, um, the uh, goddess has a sense of humor because uh, when I was uh, about 16, I lost interest in the uh, like Greek Orthodox Church, and I started spending all my time and energy with uh, Krishna mantras and reading the Bhagavad Gita. You know, it was a very, mm -hmm. very Hindu-centric kind of focus at that time. But then um, in 83, after almost uh, 10 years of that, I had a vision uh, of... Uh, a very powerful waking vision, but it wasn't Krishna or Rama or Shiva or Lakshmi mm -hmm. or Saraswati. Mm -hmm. It was the Lord Jesus. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it took me about 10 years to kind of integrate that back in. And I finally, you know, understood that, well, of course, God is going to appear to people in the form that they're most comfortable with or that they were brought up with or is socially you know, something that you can process on a um, social, intellectual level. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I think, uh, you know, like when I became a devotee of Amma about four years ago, uh, I asked her to give me a Christian mantra. So, of course, mm -hmm. she didn't hesitate. She said, oh, Christave, yes, we love Christave. Everyone mm -hmm. in India knows Christave, incarnation of God. Pure mm -hmm. Godhead, pure consciousness, pure bliss, power, light, the whole deal. 
So mm-hmm. she did that, and it's it's very comforting to know on an inner visceral level that the oneness is very much real. You know, it's not it's not an intellectual understanding. As Amma says, you need to experience it. You can't uh, you can't know the taste of sugar by looking at the word sugar on a paper. You have to taste right. it and know it, and then the words aren't necessary anymore. So I'm very blessed in that way that I've had uh, multiple experiences of divine presence through many different forms. Of course, there's been other experiences that with that were with angels and with spirit guides. And um, it's just very comforting to know that uh, the path is not important, but what is important is awakening to the universal oneness and the the oneness of our existence with all souls, that we all are essentially the same. We're different sparks of the same brilliant source. Right. Right. Let's listen to one of the tracks now that we have the angelic presence and the oneness with one infinite beautiful consciousness that abounds. Um, You did a track, um, a beautiful piece, Angelic Presence, and it's from the Grace album, which you got the Grammy for. Would you like to say a few words about this song? Sure. Uh... When one uh, evening after I was working in the studio, I was meditating and um, I heard the angelic host singing in in my head, you know, as we mm-hmm. musicians have these experiences. And <laughs> of course, it was the most beautiful thing that I could possibly imagine. And the next day I went in the studio and I tried to replicate what I had heard in in my meditation. And of course, it it fell short of the goal because I'm a human and I'm not an angel. (laughs) Angels are different Mm -hmm. creatures. (laughs) They have powers that we don't (laughs) have. Uh, And of course, we have capabilities that they don't have, which is the beauty of it all. And uh, so angelic presence is one of my several attempts to to try to give people that feeling of, of what the angels sound like.
just delightful. Actually, the mind just, there are no words, right? When you come back from a, a journey like that, angelic presence. I'm here in studio with Paul Avgerinius, and that was a track off of his Grace album. And here we are talking about Grace, and I want to, I just, I, I'm just so curious about all your answers that here I'm going to go with this one. The great yogi Paramahansa Yogananda, he said once that a thousand Christ sent to earth would not redeem its people unless they themselves became Christ-like by purifying and expanding their individual consciousness. And the word yoga means union and divine. And we were talking a lot about your your journey with devotion and with yoga and with the Greek Orthodox traditions and just, you know, just really understanding that it's this oneness of being. So do you have any daily practice that nourishes you and connects you to um, the infinite awareness or that, that quantum field of consciousness so that you can actually even begin writing such beautiful pieces of music? Oh, yes, Kara, that's a beautiful quote by uh, Yogananda. Um, yes, I do. Of course, I um, I do uh, a set of uh, yoga exercises in the morning that are actually prescribed by Ama. It's a uh, I am integrated Amrita meditation technique, and then there's a actual meditation session after mm -hmm. the physical movements, and then I do meditation in the evening, of course, and then during the day, I try to chant my mantras and holy sacred mantras. Uh, and sing them as much as possible. So if I'm driving in my car, like uh, this morning I was uh, dropping my daughter off at school and coming back, I was uh, chanting uh, and singing mantras most of the way. So people don't realize how much of their daily life is actually taken up by uh, mundane activities, you know, washing the dishes or dishwasher or uh, doing housework or doing uh, some type of work where uh, you you could chant your mantra and uh, mm -hmm. so it's very good or affirmations if you're a fan of that if that works for you you can um, use idle time like if you're waiting in line somewhere instead of being upset and impatient or thinking of the future or the past you should focus in the present moment by doing affirmations or chanting uh, a mantra that uh, is calling to you. So there's lots of ways that we can all do sadhana, spiritual practice. And uh, it's very true that the global awakening that we all long for, the end of warfare, the end of poverty, the end of hunger, the end of diseases that are controllable, that uh, wonderful heavenly earth will come when a majority of humans awaken to their own divinity. And so mm -hmm. we're in a state which is the same state we've been in for millennia, which is uh, there's a small group of people that are <laughs> trying to stay awake and are awake and there's a lot of people that are living unconsciously and they're creating their own suffering for themselves and for others and they're not aware of the fact that that's what's going on so it's very important the work that we do if we can help other people to enter into the spiritual path and to try to awaken a little more every day it has a ripple effect you know and it reaches out uh, you look at the number of people that Amma has reached uh, through her ministry. Mm. It's uh, into the dozens of millions at this point. I mean, she's personally hugged over 30 million people. And then there's a ripple effect from mm. that. All the people that are really moved by her, like me, reach out to other people. And so right. pretty soon, it's it's a lot of people. <laughs> and that's a beautiful thing. That's exactly what we want. Because this is a beautiful earth. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful environment. And and you people that are more awake, they want to take care of the earth. They want to honor the mother, protect the goddess, protect the giver of all existence, protect the earth, and be a good steward 
that's a natural outcome of awakening because the first thing after joy is gratitude we did an album called gratitude joy many years ago that's been very Mm -hmm. popular and uh it's a simple principle that if you express one either gratitude or joy the other will follow so if you're happy Mm -hmm. what do you say oh thank you so much for making Mm -hmm. me happy i'm so Mm -hmm. happy with you thank you so much and then simply expressing gratitude before joy will bring joy just saying you know i'm thank you for the thank you for the fact that i have this chair to sit in in this home that has heating so i'm not freezing and i have a right. telephone that i can talk with cara and talk <laughs> you know this is just endless yeah. things to be thankful for and of course that makes me happy when i start thinking of all the wonderful the wonderful gifts that i'm given every moment well, this is, that's kind of the last line of the, it's not the last line of the Lord's Prayer, on earth as it is in heaven. I, that line touches me always because I think we can make, we can manifest that, we can make that happen. And we can even not even, we don't need to keep the affirmation silent when we're struggling in that line and, and maybe, or in a traffic jam. We can even, we can start singing them or dancing them or moving them. And yeah. it would be a, a fun yeah. earth to live on if if we just started yeah putting into practice right we're gonna take a little break very small break paul i promise keep your keep your wonderful thoughts and we're gonna be back in a couple minutes all right Conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Hi, this is New Age Grammy winner Paul Avgerinos. Thanks for listening to Ohm Times Radio, and please support my peaceful healing music with a purchase at iTunes, Amazon, or wherever you shop for fine music. Just put my name into the search engine, Paul Avgerinos. A, V like Victor, G like George, E, R, I, N, O, S. You can also visit me at roundskymusic.com. Thanks for listening, and I'm wishing you the brightest of blessings. Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 31 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Get the facts at beyondido.org. Brought to you by the Gill Foundation and the Ad Council. Hey, we are back with the composer, producer, wonderful soul, Paul Avgerino, is talking about song consciousness, music, sound healing, And I want to slip in a quote, which Plato said, music is a movement of sound to reach the soul for the education of its virtue. 
I like that. Uh, yeah. So Paul. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's right? a Greek. It's a Greek. The Greek. And I thought for the Greek guest, I would put a little Greek in the little splash of Greek. Um, you just spoke in the. You just spoke a little bit before the break. You were talking about um, being very moved um, by the presence of Ama. Ama for the the listener. She's a Hindu spiritual leader, a guru, and she's considered a saint by many of her followers. And Amma is quoted to say, a continuous stream of love flows from me to all of the creation. So what is your aspiration? What is What do you have um, for your contribution to that stream of love? What is what is your vision? Or what is your what is your stream of love look like? <laughs> well, <laughs> my my daily goal is to always be a little bit better servant of God, of the goddess, of Amma, mm. of mm -hmm. love, to be a little bit more open, a little bit more peaceful, a little more forgiving, a little more understanding, a little more patient, and to dwell in perfect equanimity where no outer disturbance will bother my inner bliss and true happiness that I've attained. So many of us experience this, that we may experience pure bliss in meditation, and it's so wonderful, but then we go to work and someone annoys us, and we get in a traffic jam, and all of a sudden mm. we're, <laughs> we're not so blissful anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> then we need some good music. <laughs> yeah, then we've got to put on some more New Age music and chant our yeah, exactly. So Amma says, Amma says the answer is service. Don't mm. focus on yourself so much. Serve other people. What can I do to help you? What can I do to help suffering poor people? Her service message is huge, and it's, it really works because, you know, my wife and I helped build a, a well in Uganda last year, mm -hmm. and it, it was a bit of a sacrifice, but, you know, to see those the 1,000 people in one village now have fresh potable water, they don't yeah. have to march 20, 10 miles to a ditch to, to, to get uh, disease-infested water, they, you know, j just to think of that, that would help alleviate some of their real suffering, that's what it's about. And so Amma mm -hmm. constantly reminds us, don't think about yourself so much. Think about the others, because when you're engaged in service, or seva, as we call it, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. forget about yourself, you know, and your problems diminish your so-called problems because most of us in the western world think think that things are problems when they're actually just uh, minor annoyances so mm -hmm. uh, there are people that have real problems they don't have clean water they don't have food they don't have medicine health care mm -hmm. so Amma encourages us to do as much service as we can of course she doesn't he doesn't demand or, or you know, mm -hmm. request any any specific amount, but just she says, just try to increase it little by little as you're able to, and see how it helps your awakening and it helps your comfort and your bliss levels. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an important part of our path uh, with Amma. It's a bhakti path, but there's a huge karma yoga component and a huge seva uh, service component. Yeah, and, bhakti, uh, the path of devotion, right? So for those of you yeah. that might not understand the word bhakti, not everybody comes from, you know, the bhakti yoga or bhakti path. Bhakti poets were, you know, where my heart lies as, you know, the Rumi is considered a bhakti poet. So yeah, yeah the path of devotion, yeah. of love, right? So do you do you imagine? I know I do, and I think that we have to stop imagining. You are creating it. You are doing it. I think that's wonderful. You know, the um, John Lennon's famous piece, Imagine All the People Living in a World of Peace. I'm like, we are creating it. We're no longer imagining it. We're imagining and putting in love into action. Um, do you believe that we can step into just being in a peaceful, enlightened society? Yes, it's. It's an interesting um, fact that, for instance, when you are near Amma, like if you're sitting in one of her programs, let's say, maybe 100 feet away from her or 50 feet or 200 feet, uh, you will feel 
the bliss that she is. And mm-hmm. although she's up there working hard, she would, she may sit there for 17 hours in a row. Actually, she does this almost every day. She'll sit yeah. for 17 hours hugging people without going to the bathroom, without eating, without drinking, mm-hmm. smiling all the time, laughing, mm-hmm. giggling, smiling, comforting other people. You mm-hmm. will start to feel this fact that she is living bliss in the world and then you realize wow if she can do that then i could draw closer to that i could live more bliss and so she's modeling what it looks like to live pure bliss to live pure consciousness in the world she's modeling that for us children to see and to feel not just talking about it yeah she may give a talk and the Swami will translate it into English or French or German or whatever the case may be but she's living it so we can actually feel it viscerally we can feel Mm -hmm. it wow Mm -hmm. she really is happy no matter what it's the most amazing thing you 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 may be trying to stay up all night with her during uh, one uh, important program Mm -hmm. and um, but you get tired. You go back to your hotel room and you sleep for like three or four hours. Then you go back mm-hmm. down and she's sitting there smiling and hugging people. <laughs> then you go you go back to your hotel room and you lay down. Then you come take a shower. You get some food and you come back and she's still there doing the same thing. And then at she's the end of it, in. she gets up smiling, <laughs> smiling and laughing. Yes. And uh, and before she leaves, she'll stop and chat with some people and hug a child or whatever the case may. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. Amazing. So I encourage anyone, if any, wherever you are in the world, uh, go to amma.org, a m m a dot o r g, and uh, see her schedule. If you can possibly go and visit her, visit with her in person, it can be can be completely life changing just to see. To see a being living the gospel is amazing. It's just uh, yeah. it's uh, hard to put into words. <laughs> no, I think that's probably and it's probably also why you're a musician, right? So you're lucky. You don't have to be the you don't have to put, be the poet or the the lyricist like we struggle at times <laughs> to put that into words. But you're able to capture those soundscapes. I want to um, just. Let our listeners also hear a, a little bit off of your title track from the Grace album while we still have a chance and we still have you in studio. Um, this is the title track, I believe, from your Grammy Award winning album called Grace. Let's just yeah. go straight into it. We'll just enjoy listening yeah. to that place of no words.
And here we are back in studio with Paul Avger. And he was talking about sound consciousness, sound healing, the bhakti path. And we were just savoring, I have to say, savoring that really beautiful, stunning track called Grace off of Paul's newest album, uh, Grace, which was an, an ac uh, academy. I'm putting you now into uh, the other part. That's your career. I'm seeing already your future lives here as an actor. Um, <laughs> Grammy wow. Award winning album. And um, Paul, you've contributed so much. You've had 24 albums. I believe you just talked about another one that you're going to be releasing in the fall. How can our listeners connect with you where, where's the best place to get a hold of all your music and well and really everything. wherever you are drawn uh, iTunes Spotify uh, Amazon whatever but uh, if you'd like um, to see more depth on me you can go to roundskymusic.com round r-o-u-n-d s-k-y music.com or you can just put my last name into a search engine and you'll see all kinds of uh, options a V G E R I N O S Paul Avgerinos, and uh, you know people like to some people like to go on YouTube, some people like Spotify, Pandora, right. whatever whatever they like to do. I'm I'm there. <laughs> um, what's what is the one small thing that you recommend maybe for people to do or our listening audience to help them start reconnecting with their own musical landscapes and to keep them in tune is there an, is there some place easy to start for people that might be starting out on this path of sound healing or or tuning in to their their spirit sure. and their body well i think there's two things that are very helpful and uh one is any kind of gentle yoga stretching something that's relaxing and comforting and helps to quiet down the body and to center in the spirit. And then any kind of singing or playing of an instrument, <clears throat> even if you're not a good singer, <clears throat> if you do some vocalizing, chanting ohms, or singing along with a song, or trying to play the piano or the guitar, anything like that is very, very helpful because it be starts to connect our body to the higher vibrational realm so that our, our entire body, our nervous system, our physical system starts to resonate with the higher spiritual frequencies. So those two things are very important. People often neglect their bodies way too much and mm -hmm. there's a price to be paid for that in health and in happiness and in lack of spiritual advancement, lack of awakening, because we have this beautiful vessel, uh, vehicle, for a reason, to use it right. correctly. Um, you know, it's easy to meditate if you're pure spirit, if you're just, you know, floating disembodied consciousness. Um, but we, you know, here we are in these bodies, in this physical world, so it's important that we... Uh, acknowledge that in a positive, healthy way. Mm -hmm. Is there, you were just talking about singing, and I, of course, am a singer. So is there one thing you know to be true about voice? Well, I know that whenever I sing, I always feel better. Mm, if I'm making yeah. up a silly song for my daughter, I always feel happy and joyful. Or if I'm chanting or singing a devotional song or some popular song that I like. I always feel better, more energized, more uplifted, mm -hmm. more connected to the oneness. So, and everyone can sing, you know, just because you don't right. have a great voice or you, you don't have good pitch recognition. Don't worry about it. Just, uh, mm -hmm. it's not a competition. You know, that's the thing. People are very insecure about this. And, and I've even seen people that actually have beautiful voices that say, oh, I can't sing. And I'm like, right, you, have a, right. you have a more beautiful voice than I do. You're the one that should be singing. <laughs> yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of sabotage and a lot of judgments, but we all have a beautiful yeah. voice. We all have a big uh, voice channel. And I think a lot of times what people don't realize is, I mean, I personally can teach anybody to sing in tune. So it's right. a lot about practice and muscles and just exploring. 
that amazing instrument. Paul, I have been blessed. I've been so blessed to have you today. I'm so happy everything worked out. And um, I wish you you. much success. I'd love to have you back on the show for your album when it comes out in the fall. It's been that would be my great. Pleasure. Yes, let's do that. Yeah. Well, okay. I have another album with another album with Deepak coming out in March. It's the let's do that the, too. Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> can do that too. <laughs> we're gonna do it all. Okay. In service, Thanks. Paul. In service. We're we're living in the service. path. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Creating a Very cool society for everybody. A beautiful Earth. Yeah. Much love. Amen. Yeah. Much love. Big hug. Okay. Thanks so Big much, hug. Cara. Thank Bye-bye. You.